Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Higher Revision video. There's 81 days going to your GCSE Higher exam, so keep up the good work, you're doing fantastically well. And today we're going to be looking at 3D trigonometry and 3D Pythagoras. Now I did try to write Pythagoras and trigonometry using 3D lettering, uh, but it didn't work out very well, so I've just written 3D Pythagoras and 3D trigonometry. But today we're going to be looking at 3D trigonometry and Pythagoras. I really hope you found this video useful. I'm going to go through some questions and I'll give you some to try as well. So remember to pause the video to try those questions. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at 3D Pythagoras and then I'll look at 3D trigonometry with you and then there'll be a question at the end which has some parts on both 3D Pythagoras and trigonometry. So let's start off by looking at 3D Pythagoras. Now I'm going to do this question for you but if you wanted to you feel free to pause the video and to try it yourself. So here we've got a cuboid and we've got the lengths AB is equal to 6 centimetres, BC is equal to 2 centimetres and CG is equal to 3 centimetres. And we've been asked to find the length of AG. Now if I wanted to find the length of this diagonal AG, what I want to do is I actually want to find the length of this right angle triangle ACG. So ACG. And this triangle ACG, it's a right angle triangle, so it's a right angle triangle. And if we can find two of the lengths, we can use Pythagoras to find the third length. So what we need to do is we need to find the length of AC to begin with. So let's find the length of AC. Now, to find the length of AC, we need to consider another triangle. And if we look at the base of the cuboid, we've got a rectangle. So if we cut across diagonally, we've got a right angle triangle. This would be a right angle here, ABC. And that's a right angle triangle. And as you can see, we've got two of the lengths. We've got the two shorter sides, BC and AB. And if we use Pythagoras, we can find the length of AC. So we're going to use Pythagoras once to find the length of AC. And then we'll look at that other right angle triangle, ACG. So if we were looking downwards here, this would be the triangle ABC, where AB is equal to 6 centimetres, the BC is equal to 2 centimetres, and we want to find the length of this diagonal AC, so we want to find the length of that side there. So let's use Pythagoras' theorem to find the length of this side. So Pythagoras' theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And remember that A and B are the two shorter sides, and C is the longer side. So let's say both sides, so A is one of the smallest, B is another smaller side, and C is the longer side, the hypotenuse, the one opposite the right angle. So let's substitute our values for A, B, and C, so little a would be 2 squared, plus b squared, which is 6 squared, is equal to c squared, which is x squared. So 2 squared, that's going to be 4, plus 6 squared, that's 36, and that's equal to x squared. 4 plus 36 is equal to 40, so we've got 40 equals x squared. Now, the length of this side is obviously not 40, we now need to square root it. So x is equal to the square root of 40, and whenever we square root 40, we get that's equal to 6.32455, and so on, centimetres. So the length of AC is equal to 6.32455, and so on, centimetres. Now, because we're going to be using Pythagoras' theorem again, it can actually be useful in these questions to leave it as a third. So the length of AC, I could actually just leave it as the square root of 40, and that might be quite useful for me. Now, if we go back to the question, we're asked to find the length of AG, so let's go back to that triangle ACG. Okay, so we're now looking at this triangle, ACG, and I remember it's a right angle triangle. And what we're now going to do is we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem again because we've got the length of AC, which is root 40. We've got the length of CG, which is 3 centimetres. And we can find the length of the hypotenuse, the longer side, by using Pythagoras' theorem again. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little sketch of this triangle. And we've been asked to find the length of AG. I'm going to call that Y. So we've got a right angle triangle. Well, obviously, it's a right angle because it's a right angle triangle. And we want to find the length of the side, which is the hypotenuse. So let's label the sides, A and B being the shorter sides and C being the longer one. So we've got A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So A squared, that's going to be 3 squared plus B squared. That's the square root of 40 squared. I'm just writing that in brackets. And that's equal to C squared. And that's Y squared. So if substitute in our lengths, 3 squared, that's equal to 9, plus the square root of 40 squared. Well, the square root of 40 times the square root of 40 would just be 40. So that's cool, that's just 40. And then that's equal to y squared. So we've got 9 plus 40 is equal to y squared. Well, 9 plus 40 is equal to 49, so it's going to be 49 is equal to y squared. So we've got that this side squared is equal to 49 centimetres. Well, obviously, this side's not 49 centimetres, so we now need to square root. So we're going to do the square root of 49, and the square root of 49 is equal to 7. So that means that AG is equal to 7 centimetres. So that's it. So the question asks us to find the length of AG. The answer is 7 centimetres, and that's it. Okay, so we've had a look at a 3D Pythagoras question. Now let's have a look at a 3D trigonometry question. So we've got a cuboid again, and we've been asked to to find the size of angle CAG. So let's actually draw that triangle on CAG onto the diagram or consider that angle. So CA is there and then A to G is there. So we want to find the size of this angle here. And if we notice that's a right angle triangle, if we're actually drawing up C to G, that's a right angle triangle. So angle CAG would be this angle in here. We've been asked to find the size of this angle here. So what we need to do is to find the size of this angle, we're going to look at this right angle triangle. Now we've got one length, which is equal to 8 centimetres. If we could find one of the other lengths, either the length of AC or AG, we could use trigonometry in three dimensions to find the size of this angle. 
Now, if we actually consider the base of the cuboid, which is a rectangle, if we cut it diagonally, they've got the line AC. But then this would be a right angle triangle here. So this is a right angle triangle, and we can actually use Pythagoras, like we've done in the question before, to find the length of AC. So we've got the right angle triangle, A, B, C. And if we look down on top of the cuboid, that's what it would look like. And we've got 12 centimeters there, and we've got five centimeters there, and we want to find the length of the diagonal. So again, let's use Pythagoras' theorem, which is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And let's label the sides. A and B are the two shorter sides, so A and B. And C is the length of the hypotenuse, so let's call that C. And let's call it X, just so we can substitute something in. So we've got A squared, so it's going to be five squared plus B squared, which is 12 squared equals C squared, which is X squared. Five squared is equal to 25. 12 squared is 144, and that's equal to x squared. And when we add these together, we get 169 equals x squared. So we're going to need to square root, so x is equal to the square root of 169. And the square root of 169 is equal to 13. So that means that AC is 13 centimetres. So we we'll find the length of AC, which is 13 centimetres. So that's fantastic, because if we now consider that right angle triangle, CAG, we can find the size of that angle. So let's do that. Okay, so we've been asked to find the size of angle CAG. So we've marked on that angle Vita, and we've got that right angle triangle, CAG, and we've got the length of two of the sides. AC is 13 centimeters and CG is 8 centimeters. So we can now use trigonometry in three dimensions to find the size of that angle. So let's do that. Okay, so I've just done a little sketch of our right angle triangle CAG with that angle marked in Vita. We've got the height of it being 8 centimeters and the length of AC being 13 centimeters. So let's use now trigonometry. So let's label our sides. So we've got our right angle. So the opposite of the right angle would be the hypotenuse opposite the angle, it's called the opposite, and then the side that's left is the adjacent. I remember our trig ratio. Now in this question, we're going to be using the opposite, because we're using the opposite here of 8 centimetres. We're going to be using the adjacent, which is the 13 centimetres, but we're not using or trying to find AG. So we can cross off the hypotenuse, and we can cross off any trig ratio that uses the hypotenuse. So we're left with tan. So we get the tan vita equals opposite divided by adjacent. So let's substitute in our values. Tan vita, so tan vita, what we're trying to find, is equal to the opposite, which is equal to 8, divided by the adjacent, which is equal to 13. So we've got the tan vita is equal to 8 13. So this angle is obviously not equal to 8 13, so we need to do the inverse tan. So vita is equal to the inverse tan, tan minus 1, of 8 13. We get the vita is equal to 31.6075 and so on degrees. And that's it, so we find the size of that angle. The vita is equal to 31.6 degrees to one decimal place. And that's it. So in this question, we use 3D Pythagoras and 3D trigonometry to work out the size of that angle. Okay, let's have a look at some questions now for you to try yourself. So we've got this triangular prism, and it's a triangular prism. The length of it is equal to 20 centimetres. We've got the M's the midpoint of BC, so M's in the middle of BC. So this is an isosceles triangle here, because if that's in the middle and the point F's directly above it, that's an isosceles triangle. So this is an isosceles triangle. We've got the halfway across the base is 5 centimetres. That means the whole way across BC would be 10 centimetres. And we've got the length of CF is equal to 9 centimetres. And the first part that I want you to try to work out is, can you work at the length of AC. So can you pause the video now and work out the length of AC? Okay, so if we consider the base of this triangular prism, we've got this rectangle, A, B, C, D, and that means if we cut it across diagonally, like so, this would be a right angle triangle. So that's a right angle triangle if we look down on it. And we've got the length of two of the sides. We know that AB is 20 centimetres, and that BC, well, that's the whole way across, that's five and five centimetres so all together, that would be 10 centimetres. So BC is 10 centimetres, and AB is equal to 20 centimetres. And we want to find the length of AC, which is the hypotenuse of that right angle triangle. So let's do a little sketch. And we've got the AC is the length of this side here. Let's call that X. So we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem to find the length of AC. So let's label the sides. A and B are the two shorter sides, and C is the longest one. So we've got A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So A squared, that's going to be 10 squared, plus B squared, that's going to be 20 squared, equals C squared, which is X squared, equals X squared, so that's X squared. So 500, adding those together, 500 would be equal to X squared. So if we square root 500, then we can find the length of AC. So the square root of 500 is equal to 10 root 5, or 22.360679 and so on centimetres. So that means the AC is 22.36 centimetres to two decimal places. So that's the length of AC. Okay, so that's our first part done. If you got that, well done. Okay, this time we've got another 3D Pythagoras question. We've been asked to work out the length of EM. So we want to find the length of EM. So feel free to press pause and try this now yourself. 
so EM is the line that joins E and M like so. If we have a look here, we've actually got a right angle triangle because if we have a look at MF, that's going straight up. So there's a right angle triangle there. So E to F, that's equal to 20 centimeters. We know that because it's the same as AB. It's a triangular prism, so they're the same. We want to find then, we want to find the length of EM, so we need to know the length of MF. So to find the length of MF or FM, what we're going to do is we're going to consider half of this isosceles triangle. So if we look at this triangle BCF, we have a right angle triangle. Whenever we chop it in half, we've got MF and we've got this right angle triangle. And we know that MC is five centimeters. We know that CF is nine centimeters. So if we use Pythagoras' theorem, we can find the length of MF. So let's sketch this triangle MCF. So that's the triangle MCF. So we want to find the height of this right angle triangle. So we've got this right angle triangle. Let's label the sides. A and B are the two shorter sides. So X is one of the shorter sides. And the longer side's opposite the right angle. So that's our longer side, C. So let's write down Pythagoras' theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And let's substitute in our values the two shorter sides. A squared, that's 5 squared, plus B squared, that's going to be X squared, is equal to C squared, that's 9 squared. And now let's take away 25 from both sides, so that'll give us the x squared equals 56. So that means that this side squared is equal to 56, so that means that x is equal to the square root of 56. And if we work that out, we get the square root of 56 would be equal to 7.483 and so on centimeters. So that means that mf or fm is equal to 7.483 and so on centimeters. So we've got the height of this triangle. Now we're going to be using it again. Now rather than rounding this and using it again or dragging the whole thing out, I'm actually just going to keep it as a square root of 56. So now we've got this triangle EFM, this triangle here, it's a right angle triangle. We've been asked to find the length of EM. So with this triangle, let's sketch it out and let's find the length of EM. So let's do that. Okay, so we've got triangle EFM, so EFM. We've got the EF is 20 centimeters. We've got the FM is equal to root 56 centimeters. And we're trying to find the length of EM. So let's label the sides. We've got our right angle triangle, so the longer side will be C. And then A and B will be our two shorter sides. So we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem again on this right angle triangle EFM, and let's do that. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So A squared, that's going to be the square root of 56 squared plus 20 squared is equal to C squared. I'm just going to call that Y, so Y squared. So we're going to square our square root of 56. So root 56 times root 56 is 56 plus 20 squared, that's 400, equals Y squared. Now, adding these together, 400 plus 56 would be 456 is equal to y squared. So that means that we want to find y, so we just need to square root this. So we need to do y is equal to the square root of 456, and that's equal to 21.354 and so on centimeters. And that's it. So that means the EM is 21.354 centimeters to three decimal places. And that's it. We'll find the length of EM. Fantastic. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our last question. So it's another 3D trigonometry question, and we've been asked to find the size of angle MDF. So can you work out, pause the video now, and work out the size of angle MDF? Okay, so if I was doing this question, I would first of all need to find out where the angle is. So MD is there, and DF is there. So that means the angle MDF, MDF, this angle here, would be equal to Vita. So that's the angle we're trying to find in here. Now, this is a right angle triangle. The angle between MF and DM would be equal to 90 degrees. So this is a right angle in here. And we want to find the size of angle MDF. We want to find the size of that angle. So because this is a right angle triangle, we need to know two of the sides. If we find the length of two of the sides, we can then use trigonometry to then find the size of the angle. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I actually remember us finding MF already, the square root of 56. We found that already because we considered this isosceles triangle at the front here, and we chopped it in half to get a right angle triangle. We know that was equal to 5 centimeters. That was equal to 9 centimeters. That was a shorter side, so we had a 9 squared. Take away 5 squared, and that's 56, so it's the square root of 56. So if we go back to our question, we know that MF is equal to the square root of 56 centimeters. And I'm going to leave it as a third just because it means I'm not having to round it. So the MF is equal to the square root of 56. So that's one of the lengths of that right angle triangle. Now we need to find one of the other lengths. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually find the length of DM because I think it's quite straightforward to find the length of DM. So in terms of DM, we'd, so if we consider the base of the triangular prisms, and if we had that base, D, C, B, A, so if we were looking at it down that way, 
we'd have that the length of it is equal to 20 centimeters. So 20 centimeters, 20 centimeters, 20 centimeters. And we have that M would be here. It's in the middle of CB. So that's M. And the distance from C to M was equal to five centimeters. And that's a right angle triangle. So if we cut it across there diagonally, that's a right angle triangle. And if we have a look at it going downwards, you've got your right angle triangle here. There's your right angle. You've got your five centimeters and your 20 centimeters there. And you can use Pythagoras to find the length of DM. So let's do that. We've got our two shorter sides, which are A and B, your five centimeters and your 20 centimeters and the length of the diagonal let's just call that y so we've got the a squared plus b squared equals c squared a squared that's 5 squared plus b squared that's 20 squared is equal to c squared that's going to be y squared 5 squared is 25 so we get 25 plus 400 equals y squared and then add them together that's 425 equals y squared so y is equal to the square root of 425 and that's equal to 5 root 17, or as a decimal number, 20.6155 and so on centimetres. So we've found the length going from D to M. So that's fantastic. And I'm actually going to leave it as a third. So D to M would be the square root of 425 centimetres. So now we know the lengths off. I'm just going to go out 20 for a second. If we look at this, we've now got this right angle triangle, DMF. We know the length from D to M is the square root of 425 centimetres. We've got this the length from M to F being the square root of 56 centimetres centimeters and it's a right angle triangle so we can use trigonometry so let's do that okay so this is our little sketch we've got dmf so dmf d to m is equal to root 425 centimeters mf is equal to the square root of 56 centimeters and we're trying to find the size of this angle so let's label our side so opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse opposite the angle is the opposite and the other side is the adjacent let's jot down our trig ratios so we've jotted down our trig ratios so in this question we're not using we're trying to find the hypotenuse so we can cross off sine and cross off cos so in this question we're going to be using tan so we've got the tan of eta tan of this angle so the tan of eta will be equal to the opposite which is root 56 divided by the adjacent which is the square root of 425 so that angle obviously isn't equal to root 56 divided by the square root of 425 so we need to find the size of this angle so vta will be equal to the inverse tan of root 56 over the square root of 425 and when we work that out we get the vita is equal to 19.95 degrees the two decimal places and that's it and that's it so i really hope you found this video useful on 3d pythagoras and trigonometry it's really important that you're confident with your pythagoras and trigonometry so if you need any extra help on those remember to go back to those other videos and they'll be useful for you as well also with 3d trigonometry and pythagoras the type of questions that you might encounter can change depending on perhaps a situation perhaps there's a, a flagpole in the middle of a field and you need to find the angle of elevation or perhaps there's a boat below a cliff and you need to find the angle of depreciation and so on so I highly recommend that you look at the practice questions today and i put a link to them in the description below so keep up the hard work you're doing fantastically well there's 81 days to go into your gcc higher exam if you've been watching these videos so far fantastic that all that work's going to be really useful for you with your revision and keep up the hard work and i'll see you tomorrow for the next one cheers bye